noticed over time that my notebook for this just keeps getting bigger and bigger quiet on the set please if you would notice off to my right today I have a my little pony and that is thanks to haters out there apparently there is some fun chatter starting on all of my YouTube videos where people are calling me a my little pony I feel like people try to upset me by calling me a My Little Pony because my hair color changes, but really, <sighs> that is so sweet, honestly, it's so sweet. I would have preferred Rainbow Bright, but I'll go with My Little Pony, I'm totally fine with that. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. This is the weekend we are gonna get all caught up on Ghost Adventures reviews because everyone has questions about like the Vicksburg stuff and you know we have to back it up. I'm still one behind. So the one that we're gonna be covering today is the Ogden Demon Possession. So this is the one that took place in Ogden, Utah, which really isn't that far from Vegas. And that was where Jen the wife and David the husband were occurring what they believed to be on the brink of a possession. You know, honestly, I feel like the My Little Pony on top of the skull accurately represents my life like 100%. So first off, right off the bat, I have to say that the cinematography for this episode, between the camera shots of the graveyard, they had some really dark, ominous shots within Jin's house where they're talking to the wife, Jin. It was really dark and ominous. They had a couple of like slider shots where it's like that fluid moving shot and they were kind of sideways to make you feel like you were in a different dimension. Oh my goodness, cinematography was on point, on point in this episode. David, the husband, was saying that he had a teenage girl that was coming to him and she was presenting herself as a redhead wearing a blue dress and she basically wanted him to kill himself to join her on the other side. Once again, we're right back to dealing with a spirit and having spirit communication where this energy is presenting itself as a child. I just don't trust child spirits. Please, I know I'm, I'm beating it into your heads, you guys, and I know I'm repeating myself, but it is for your safety. Don't trust child spirits off the bat. It is very dangerous. So David, the dad, immediately gets into a fight with Jen because basically he doesn't want ghost adventures there. He doesn't think that they can help him. And apparently this spirit that's attached to David doesn't want them there either. So immediately right off the bat, there's a fight and the daughter comes out to say, just ignore it, he'll be okay. Finally, David comes out, the dad, and he says, I don't like talking about her, I'm uncomfortable, I don't really want to be here right now. He even says to Zach, I quote, she's mad as hell, meaning the energy is mad as hell. David says that he can actually hear her, like audibly in his ear, and she's telling him to shut up and walk away. I feel like I am forced to bring up the topic of mental health when we are establishing looking at someone like David, you know, he's going through obviously severe oppression, potentially he's in the phases of prepossession. So I feel like it's only accurate if we are looking at the other side of mental health and the possibilities that what we're witnessing could also be schizophrenia. So I'm just gonna take schizophrenia, like um, the symptoms right off of, of the web, okay? So behavioral is a social isolation, disorganized behavior, aggression, agitation, which we did see that within him, compulsive behavior, hostility, um, repetitive movement, self-harm, and lack of restraint. Another cognitive issue is thought disorder, delusions, amnesia, belief of an ordinary event or a personal meaning, um, you know, that aren't 
one's own disorientation memory loss mental confusion slowness in activity levels or false belief of uh, superiority there's anger swings um, anxiety mood swings apathy so he doesn't feel a lot of um, obviously sadness for his family he's more concerned about him being with her and doing what she says feeling of being detached from himself general discontent loss of interest um, and please being pleased during activities elevated mood inappropriate emotional response which we also did see this in later in the episode you know the bishop is in there and he starts like kind of chuckling in the middle of a discussion it's kind of like it was really inappropriate behavior psychologically they'll have hallucinations paranoia hearing voices depression fear delusions or religious delusions speech is um, incoherent rapid frenzied um, and sometimes sometimes they'll get a speech disorder with schizophrenia i am not a doctor obviously so i have no right to diagnose david or anyone for that matter the only reason i'm pointing this out is this is what makes it so hard to diagnose an actual possession or you know in need of an exorcism Unfortunately, the first thing people or society or possibly doctors, psychologists, or even a bishop is going to ask, you know, how is the mental health of that person? Obviously, he hasn't been diagnosed with this. They would have probably released that information on, on TV. But if you look at the symptoms that I just read, it also sounds a lot like schizophrenia. And that is what makes demonic possession so hard to diagnose. And I believe that is why when the archdiocese gets involved in an actual demonic case, they are so particular with it. They need actual evidence of poltergeist activity to determine that mental health isn't the number one factor that could actually be going on. Do I think David's possessed? After he drank the holy water not knowing that it had been blessed by the bishop, I was extremely compelled by seeing that. It's hard to determine. But I will say I remember Aaron was on TV and one of the last cuts they had was, this is really hard to watch. And so, I mean, obviously it wasn't just affecting the family or David, it was also affecting ghost adventures on like a deeper emotional level. Zach says, do you want her to go away? And David says, I don't know, I'm not sure. David tells Zach that this energy has been telling him to go kill himself. The kids have also claimed that they are now getting suicidal thoughts because they'll, they'll wake up to something standing over them. It's interesting because the daughter said that when this dark thing comes in her room to scare her, it actually shows its true self versus wearing a mask, you know, to her dad as this child in fear that needs him. I thought it was really sweet that Zach was trying to comfort the young boy when he started to cry. I think that when he saw the cameras and ghost adventures and maybe even if the bishop was there at that time, um, he realized how real this whole situation had become and he kind of just broke down. I really also found it interesting that the audio tech um, with the boom mics, you had the really big box with like, the headset on, that's an audio tech. He told Zach and Aaron, come listen to this. You know, they're still mic'd up and they're talking. And that's when they were having the discussion, oh, it's cool that Ghost Adventures is here, but they can't help us. Like, you can't do anything to help us. And Zach was just like stunned by it. I'm laughing on another side too because so many times in reality TV and documentaries, people will forget that they're mic'd up and they'll like talk shit about the crew or they'll talk shit about, they'll like talk smack about each other and all of a sudden they like, the boom mic or the audio tech hears them and like, you know, oh, we forgot we're mic'd up because it's on 24 seven. They can even hear you pee when you go into the bathroom, yes. So at this point, the bishop and the sister come in um, and they also informed Zach, remember demons are masters of deception. Of course, this dark thing is going to present itself as a child that's in distress. I thought it was compelling when the bishop was blessing David and holding his head and David began crying and the sister was telling him to purge it out. Couldn't have been more accurate. When that was happening, I did look up the credentials of the bishop and the sister. They are real people. They do do this for a living. And so I really think that it says a lot about Zach and Ghost Adventures that yes, of course, doing this investigation was important to compile evidence, but they were concerned enough about this family that they called a bishop and a sister in. I'm assuming the production company did forward 
the financial means to get them to the location in Utah. So that says a lot that it was more about, you know, comforting this family and trying to get them help versus just getting everything on tape. The next step when I was pretty convinced that he probably did have some sort of a possession going on was when his wife handed him the water, which the water had been blessed by the bishop behind David's back. And the wife was like, here's the water. And he put it down and he kept like shooing his wife away saying, you're trying to hurt me. I can't help but think you're trying to hurt me. So to me, it was very interesting because if there's an energy in the house that witnessed the bishop bless the water, the energy went back to David to say, don't drink the water. She's trying to hurt you something like that, and then David was audibly hearing it and speaking about it out loud. So that right there is evidence without needing ghost gear, right? I mean, it's almost like, is David on a psychic level where he's able to communicate with this spirit where no one else can hear it? Another thing I noticed, I don't know if you guys caught on to this, but while they were filming, this is before they started, um, you know, like burying the crucifixes in the four corners and all that stuff. When the audio was on, when they were kind of waiting for things to pick up basically in the house to see how David reacts, I couldn't help but feel like the decibels in the house were almost negative. I have talked about that before. I've been in locations where right when you're about to communicate or interact with something, I can audibly hear the energy in the atmosphere. I can almost hear the audio of the atmosphere change. And it's the only way I can explain it as it's almost like a frequency changes, like you're tuning into their frequency or they're turn, turning into your frequency. I don't really know how to explain it. Obviously, that's what makes paranormal what it is. But I could hear the decibels change on that episode. And I was like, wow, it doesn't just happen to me. Like You can hear it's almost a negative decibel where it gets so silent. That's when you know something's about to change. It's like those two universes are about to interact and crash and that's what's giving you EVPs or communication from the other side. The next big thing that I thought was huge was David finally did take a sip of the water when Zach had asked him to sip it and David spit all of the water up. He actually looked like he swallowed it and then it came back up and he had no idea that the water had been blessed. So right there, catching that on camera among all the other things, would have been enough to submit to the archdiocese to get an exorcist out to actually help this family. After that, he yelled at his wife, don't touch me, woman. So it was almost like he knew she was a part of the blessing of the holy, you know, of the water that went in inside of him when he drank it. Then he was drooling. Why I thought this was really compelling and real was because throughout the entire thing, he already looked embarrassed. Like he looked embarrassed, like he didn't want to be on TV. He didn't want to be on camera talking about this. Like he was just embarrassed in general. He was hiding his face a lot. He didn't want the cameras to see him crying. So that was like a natural human reaction versus someone just being like, Vah! and like all over, you know, the tape wanting to give this display of hysteria. He was trying to hide it. So that's a very natural, not only human thing to do, but I feel like males are worse about showing emotions than females. So he was having a very natural reaction to not show weakness in front of the camera. He doesn't want people to know, you know, this potentially could, could be real. Plus when he was hiding drooling from the camera, that, I mean, who wants to be caught on camera drooling, right? Suddenly though, there is a sinister t part uh, in this and that's where the crying turns to some weird sinister laughing. And I couldn't help but think that was so strange. And he catches himself laughing or like chuckling. And then he looks, he like starts cussing at the, the bishop and he's like, I'm sorry, Jesus. Like, um, I don't mean to be doing this in front of you, Jesus or whatever. And then he decides to get up and go outside. When he goes outside is when he loses it. He doesn't realize he's still mic'd up. We can still hear you and we're filming you from the door, but you're having a total freak out, which is also another natural human reaction. He didn't want to do that on TV, on the camera, and he probably didn't want to do it to or in front of the bishop out of respect of, you know, he's servicing God. So now we cut to night vision. There's a point when the lights go out, night vision turns on, and Billy is basically discussing 
the fact that he does not agree with Zach to do an investigation in the dark because this guy is having a potential possession. I'm on the fence about this, so I'd love to hear your opinions on it. So let me give you my devil's advocate side of why I agree and why I disagree. On one side, it's hard for me to agree with an investigation when I always say safety first, right? You guys have heard me always say safety first, safety first, and I stick to that. I still agree with that 100%. We need to make sure that everyone is safe no matter what. That should be the number one priority. So with that being said, I partially agree with Billy that it was probably not the safest choice because Billy knows what happens when they investigate. It stirs things up, it makes things angrier, they wanna communicate, and that's not really gonna help a person that's having a potential possession as we speak. Now on the other side, I agree with Zach. The side I agree with Zach on is that how many times in your life will you be able to not only witness a possession, but be able to tape it or an oppression and will you be able to attempt to investigate to ensure that something in fact is there? That opportunity doesn't arrive very often. So I see Billy's side and I see Zach's side. Putting ghost adventures aside, I don't think that I would have done it in the name of ghost adventures. I would have continued the investigation in the name of compiling evidence to help this man and this family so that they can get help from something higher like the Roman Catholic Church by submitting actual evidence to them. I would have done what Zach did. I would have filmed, but not in the name of Ghost Adventures, in the name of compiling evidence for the family. At some point, Zach goes into the back of the closet. He starts hearing these really kind of dark voices come through. One of them says, we're praying, which is definitely a mock to the sister and the bishop. Zach's asking them more questions, and then one of them comes through agitated and says, hold on. And we're back again to the audio tech, hearing the husband and wife outside, seeing figures on top of the roof. They forgot once again they're mic'd up. So just let this be a lesson to everybody out there. If you're ever a guest on a show, a paranormal show or a series, or if you ever get your own series, don't forget you're mic'd up all the time. They can hear everything you do and don't talk smack about anybody because they will hear it and it will be recorded forever. Zach brings in the SLS camera. There's a cross hanging up on the wall. There's a little tiny figure that just happens to be the size of the cross. Looks like it's like a Jesus Christ crucifixion. Very interesting that it was mocking that. I do believe that was an excellent piece of evidence they captured once again for the archdiocese if need be. Back to the PSV7, they get a voice that says stop it in this really dark voice. They ask, what do you want? It says Father Brian, which was really creepy to me. What do you want from David? A voice comes through and says, in a girly voice, marry me. Wow. That confirms every single thing that David has said is 100% factual. Towards the end, while the bishop and Zach are burying the crucifixes on the property, there's a point where David looks at his wife and like puts his head in his hands and says, baby, I'm trying, like he answered her. And she never said anything. And she even looks at him, she goes, I didn't say anything. And, and his wife was like, you know, confused, like what are you talking about? And he's like, you didn't? And then this is when he says, I can hear her behind the barn. She wants me to come with her and run away. And if you notice the wife was like, like this is going really far, like this is going too far. So they're burying the crucifixes, they come back inside, David's sitting on the couch, David stops breathing and he yells for the bishop to come over and look at him. David ends up slapping himself in the face really hard, like maybe he's trying to come out of it or else the energy is beating him up with himself. And if you guys saw Zach's face, like he jumped back and I, I mean, it's improper like humor, like inappropriate humor, but it was so funny. He was like... First crucifix, Jin's back hurts in pain. Second crucifix buried, David starts screaming in pain. Third crucifix that's buried, David starts squeezing his face and they can't get him to stop. Poor Billy. Walkie Zach. Um, Zach, can you come over here? <laughs> 
I feel like Billy is always in the most awkward, uncomfortable positions on the show. Fourth crucifix buried, the door frame of the entire barn door comes off so that they almost can't get inside. There was an anomaly that flew behind the bishop and the bishop did this like crazy turn like he was just gonna throw that holy water all over the place. And in the meantime, David's inside trying to go for the knife drawer and he keeps trying to pick up glass. I think Billy and Jay were pretty nervous having to deal with that inside, dealing with someone to try, dealing with someone that's trying to get into a knife drawer and throw glass can not only be dangerous for themselves, but everyone in the room. The fifth crucifix that was buried, David said that he felt very far away from himself. And Jin started saying, come to my voice, come to me. That's when David starts screaming at the energy and telling her to shut up. At this point, he gets on the bed. They notice that he actually stops breathing and the nun sister like slaps David really hard in the face if you guys saw it. That's when Aaron says this is really tough to watch. It's really hard to you know sit here and see this. The power shuts off, the episode ends, and Zach, all he states is that there's a long process and instructions that have been giving to, given to the family to continue after Ghost Adventures leaves for this possible possession. The very last scene we see is the bishop going around continuing prayer dowsing the entire property in holy water. As good as this episode was, it was a very intense episode. Do I think David was fully possessed? No. Do I think that they have a serious dark energy on their hands? Absolutely. My only hope is, is that Ghost Adventures does some sort of a follow up with them to make sure that he followed the rules and to make sure that he's okay. Because Ghost Adventures has now publicized this family, right? And that's okay, they've you know willingly agreed to expose themselves, but the right moral and ethical thing would be for them to make sure that he's okay and he's not getting worse. There's a lot of weird things that are out there, like there's this little teenage girl group of quote virgins, that's what they call themselves, that actually are performing exorcisms all over the United States. They're doing it in the name of God. They're doing it in the name of, of helping people. I've told you guys before to be very careful dealing with psychics. Be very careful with dealing with anyone in this industry that says they know everything because it's impossible. But be very careful of people that claim they can do exorcisms. This is nothing against um, Bishop David. He is legitimate. I'm talking about people that are not so legitimate. People that are looking to get their fame, people that are claiming they can, you know, perform these exorcisms that they can't really perform. It's not only unsafe for the person performing it that's improperly doing it, but it's also not safe for people that are involved in the room. I've talked before about a case where I went to interview this woman that thought she had this attachment in her house and she thought that her boyfriend was possessed and he was having um, some really violent outbursts. And I gave them tools like St. Michael spiritual warfare stuff to use before I stepped in to help. And they refused to use those spiritual warfare tools. I always want to see if a family can use spiritual warfare themselves before someone else steps in because if that family isn't willing to try it themselves, like Zach said, this bishop gave them a long list of instructions to do after he left. If they're not willing to help themselves, I don't know what makes them think someone else can come in and remove it for them. My decision was to not help this woman that thought her boyfriend was possessed because not only did I think that I couldn't help, because they weren't willing to help themselves, but I wasn't willing to put my team at risk or in danger. So just take that advice from me, if you can, which is these cases do come up. You will be contacted about these cases more often than not. I don't think they're always possession. I don't think it's always demons. I did have a person I've mentioned before that thought had aliens coming out of their toys. I think that was like a severe psychosis issue. So the biggest piece of advice I can give you to take away from this episode of Ghost Adventures is be very intelligent when picking and choosing the cases that you're planning on working on as a paranormal group. 
because there are a lot, a lot of fraudulent people out there that are not having a demonic case, that are having psychosis, that are having drug overdoses, that are having just plain crazy situations. Maybe they're just a violent person. Make sure you interview and interview, interview some more. Make sure you do historical research on the land. Dig everything up you can. Give them tools for spiritual warfare that possibly they can use for themselves before you willingly step in. And if they're not willing to help themselves, then you can't expect someone to make things perfect. I think sometimes people want us as ghost hunters to walk in and be freaking Dan Aykroyd, be like, Bzzz. I have this like, speaking of Slimer, I can just buzz him right out of here, right? Like, this is in my office, guys. Like, Slimer hangs out with me all the time, 24 seven. This is my little Slimer, it has a fuzzy. People just want me to come buzz Slimer out. They want me to be like freaking Kate McKinnon and, and do some hooga booga and, uh, you know, use my cool zapping electroid to get rid of Slimer. And then Slimer's like, bye, I'll see ya. That's not how it works. This isn't how any of this works. So I just want to make sure that you guys keep yourselves safe because it's a crazy paranormal world out there. We have all seen some crazy stuff, but the number one priority here is always keeping our team safe because at the end of the day, if our team isn't safe and we don't have our team, then we have nothing. We have no, no more investigating the paranormal, no more collecting data, no more doing really cool research, no more inventing cool stuff. Stay safe out there, guys. Make sure you get rid of those slimers. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you guys follow me on social media, and I will catch you guys next time.